I'd like to ask each and every one of you to stand this morning, and we're going to read some words from Psalm 105. We're going to have those on the screen, so if you would, please stand to your feet, if you can, and read along with me. We'll have the words on the screen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. Thank Amen. you, Father, Amen. for the blessedness that we have before us today to enter into your house with worship, with thanksgiving, into your very courts with praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, I pray today that, Lord, as we submit, surrender ourselves, yielding ourselves to you today in worship, oh, Lord, worship just reveals how much of God we've got in us. And Lord, we just want to be overrunning with your, your praises today. And we want our worship today to honor and glorify you in all ways and in all things today. We submit ourselves to you afresh and anew. And we just pray for the outpouring of your spirit in this room today. That God, you will just overwhelm us with your grace, your presence, your goodness your miracles, and your blessings. I, I am sure every person that's walked into this room today has come into this sanctuary of worship. God, there are needs in their life that exist. There may be struggles they're going through. They may be facing times of sickness. They may be facing times of difficulty. But I know right in the midst of whatever we're in, we have a God who's there. And you bring us through. Thank you, Lord. Oh, as David put it, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivereth him out of them all. So thank God we've got a deliverer with us today. We've got a mighty God who's worthy of all praise today. Oh, you are lifted up in this place. We thank you today. Right now, maybe folks are even lifting their hands in praise and thanksgiving to the greatness of our God. And Lord, you are an awesome God. You reign. And you reign with power and authority. And thank God you've included us in that plan. Thank you that you have redeemed our souls. Thank you that, Lord, that salvation is available to every person that will come to you. And I just pray today that if there's any in this room that's not saved, they will be today. I pray if there's any burdens on any hearts, they'll be resolved today. I pray that if there's any needs that is in any heart and life today, it'll be met. So we today praise you. We worship you. We thank you. We adore you. We glorify you. We lift up our praise. Oh, great, great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. Have your way in this room today, Father. Have your way in our lives. In the blessed name, above every name, the name of Jesus we pray. And all God's children said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. When he rolls up his sleeves, he's not just putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. The Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close. You better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Amen. When the sky was starless in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. While he spoke into darkness, he created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Judgment and wrath, he poured out on Sodom. Mercy and grace, well, he gave us at the cross. I hope we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Oh, 
hearts declare his praise for who can stop the Lord Almighty our God is the lion the lion of Judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our God is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb so open up the gates make way before the King of Kings, like this, our God who comes to save, He's here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fire. For the sins of the world, 
His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good. him for I know he's working all things for my good every tear I shed is worth all the investment for I know he'll see me through he said he would he has promised I nor ear can hardly fathom all the things he has in store for those who pray and I just feel like something good is about to Heaven and brother, this could be that very day. All the bad news in the paper And it seems like things get bleaker every day But for this child of God it makes no difference For things are gonna get better either way I have never been more thrilled about tomorrow Sunshine's always bursting through the skies of gray I just feel like something Good is about to happen, and brother, this could be that very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he open all of heaven, and brother. Like something
Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God. Greet folks, hug necks, shake hands, let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us today. Today's message is entitled, The Hope of Glory, taken from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1. We're preaching through this book of 2 Peter and the hope of glory. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we have that hope in Christ today. And if you don't have that hope, I want to challenge you today. Really, friend. Is it worth dying and going to hell over? Why don't you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your life and save your soul? And oh, what a difference he will make in your life. Stay tuned for the message today. I want to send this program out to some great friends of ours up in Bedford, Virginia, Benny and Myrtle. Myrtle, I'm glad you're feeling better and pray a great hand of healing of God on your life and mighty blessings to you and Benny. And we also want to encourage you today, everyone that's just watching by television, come experience Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're located right here in the heart of Lynchburg, Virginia. Come on out. Your heart will be greatly blessed of the Lord. Now, folks from all great singing today at a great church. We love you. We thank you today for tuning into the program. And we pray God's mighty and great blessings on your life. Good morning, brother. Good to see you. Amen. God bless you today. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sinks my soul.
in the house of the living God.
Nation is the middle of nowhere. Don't you know there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. And don't go riding on that long black train. I said, cling to the Father and His holy name. Your friend for a while. I know you're hiding behind that smile, and you're keeping inside tears that should have been cried. You've been brave through this trial, you've been as strong as a stone against the stormy winds that alone. But you have friends who care More than willing to share Don't face those troubles alone Can I pray for you? Can I mention your name to the Lord? When I seek his face Can I heed your case? That's what praying is for I'll help you carry your cross and find the way when you lost if we'll let Jesus be true I know that he'll see you through and I pray for you now I know There'll come a day when I'll have trouble and need you to pray. Just like you've done before, you'll mention me to the Lord. That's what I'm here to say. Now let me be there for you. And we'll divide all your problems by two. And very soon there'll be three, you and Jesus and me. That's what friends are supposed to do. Can I pray for you? Can I mention your name to the Lord? When I seek his face, can I plead your case? That's what praying is for. Help you carry your cross and find the way when you're lost. If we'll let Jesus be true, I know that He'll see you through. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Can I mention your name to the Lord? Mention your name. That's what praying is for. Find the way when you lost. If we'll let Jesus be true, I know that he'll see you through. I pray for you. If we'll let Jesus be true, I know that he'll see you through. 
can I pray for you? Thank you, Jesus. Growing in grace, we're just sharing some thoughts with you from the book of Second Peter. And uh, in the series that we're on, we departed from the book of Genesis here for a while. And God led us into the book of, of course, the second book, uh, Second Peter. And today I want to share a message with you pertaining to the hope of glory. God's message is one today, and you've got to understand the message of God. One of the key ingredients that's missing in so, much, uh, so many of our churches today is the Word of God. Uh, we have them reading books, we've got them giving thoughts and and all types of things, but it have, doesn't have any connection to the Bible. We need the Word of God. We need the Word of God in the church. We need the Word of God in our homes. We need the Word of God in our lives. And God's message is one today that is infallible. It's inerrant. It's inspired. It's incorruptible. It's instructive. It's innumerable in what it will do that brings an infinite blessing today to the person that will believe and receive the message of the Bible. See, the, the, the thing is, so many of our churches and so many of our preachers and so many people in the ranks of Christianity have abandoned the Word of God. And they're wondering today why we're in the condition that we're in. Paul said this, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the Word of God is instrumental in getting the Word of God into your life. So praise God that Jesus Christ came to, I thank the Lord that he came to annihilate the works of the devil, and the Word declares that, and to purchase completely and in full today our redemption. You're not going to get redemption except through the Redeemer. You're not going to get to God's heaven unless you come God's way. And folks, a lot of people are trying different patterns and different ways and different thoughts and different areas, but there's only one that works. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But I don't know about you, but man, I'm glad I've come through the way. And I'm glad today I'm not standing in the way. I'm glad I've received the way that has transformed and changed my life. And today, what a great and mighty work God has done in my life. Thank God for redemption. But in the process of redemption, Christ makes us and we become the children of God. Now, there are a lot of attributes that today we find in the Bible pertaining to God. But there are a lot of benefits that we receive by being the children of God. God just doesn't save you and say, okay, get back into the world and have fun. Try to make it on your own. Man, he's a present help, isn't he? I mean, he's a friend that will stick closer than a brother. He'll bring you through every trial. He'll be with you. He'll lift your every burden. He'll give you peace in the midst of a storm. He'll give you comfort in the time of difficulty. He'll do it all. And today, I'm glad that we have such a God who said, I will not leave you. Lo, I'm with you always. He said, whatever is on your heart, and whatever burden that you're going through, he said, I'll take it. And that he gives us the promise that we can cast every care, every burden, every struggle, every pain, every tear, every situation upon him. Because we have a God who cares for us. Aren't you glad of that? Say amen. amen. So we realize that in the process that we have received him into our heart and our lives, now we have become the walking temples of God. Amen. We are walking temples of the Most High God, realizing that today the same manifested glory that was inside the Holy of Holies now resides in you and I that are redeemed. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're lost today, just put it in bad, blunt English, he ain't there. He's not in your life. The only way that you can get God into your life into your spirit, your soul, and your person is by coming to him and receiving him as your personal Savior. And I'm glad that when you receive him, he comes in and stays. I'm glad I'm sealed until the day of redemption. You can take me over to the Lynchburg General Hospital, but you can't cut Jesus out of me. Amen. I mean, you can beat me up, but you can't beat Jesus out of me. 
But I tell you, I'm founded on the rock of ages today. I am safe in the Lord, and I got a friend today that never fails me, amen. And I'm glad today that I can be the walking, talking temple that will magnify and worship and give glory and praise to our holy and righteous God. Amen. And you know what he does? Then he says, I come into your heart and your life, and then he says, I'm going to give you power. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you today. Folks, now you got to get this today. Say, I want it, preacher. You, amen. It, it, it's, if God's presence is inside of you, so is his power to deliver you and to set you free from any bondage that you have ever faced in your life. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Now, what are you going to see today is this. What Peter today declares in these passages upholds the Word of God. We need that Word. I'm going to tell you right now. If you're not in the Word, how in the world can you survive in this crazy world? You need the power of this book in your life. You need to read it. You need to study it. You need to keep it. You need to abide by it. You need to walk in it. You need to be filled with it. You need the power of God's Word in your life every day. Amen. And folks, you've got to get in the Word so the Word can get in you. Come on now. You've got to get in the Word so God can transform and manifest His presence in you today. Let's go to the Word today. 2 Peter chapter 1. Starting with verse number 16. For we have not followed cunningly uh, devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses to his majesty. Amen. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when they came such a power uh, uh, came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 18, And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. See, he's giving our witness here. Remember, Jesus had been baptized by John the Baptist, and he came up out of the water, and this voice from heaven said, The dove descended, and he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So this voice which came from heaven, we heard. He's given an eyewitness of this. He said, This is not a fable. This is a fact. This is reality. When we were with him in the Holy Mount, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, listen to this, and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the pro prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now listen, those scriptures are powerful. I mean, man, this, this cuts through the fluff. This cuts through it all. This, this gives a declaration in this dark world Thank God we can today look, in, look to the light of God's Word. There, in that light, we can find instruction. We can find direction. We can find encouragement. We can find everything that we need. Oh, we have a God. Paul said, we have a God that supplies our every need according to His riches and glory. Amen. And so we must exhibit great faith in God's Word. If you don't believe God's Word, don't tell me you believe in God. If you're not in the Word, let me tell you what, that's the evidence today. I know it's a busy world. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot of things going on. I know you got a lot of things happening in your life. But you better not leave out the most important part of your living, and that's the power of this book, the Word of God. Let me ask you a question. Don't answer audibly or don't raise a hand. How much time do you spend in God's Word every week? Well, that's a good test. How much time do you spend watching television? I mean, you think about it every day. You start your day with what? Unfortunately, we start our day with a bunch of bobbing heads that's telling us a bunch of lies. Amen. Well, we could open the truth of this book that tells us the truth. They tell you all the things that's wrong. He tells you all the things that's right. 
They bring you nothing but news of depression. He brings you news of encouragement. See, you're missing the point. You're spending time in the world and the things of the world, and you're missing the most important thing that you can have in your life, and that's the power of God's Word. This Word puts power in your life. This Word puts power in your words. This Word today empowers you that you can live the Christian life and be mightily blessed of the Lord, where you've been so overwhelmed, overtaken, and pulled down by the worries and the struggles and the challenges of life. This book pulls you up into the promises of God. Oh, you need to spend time in the Word, don't you? You need, I said, you need to spend, come on, y'all. You need to talk to me. We need to spend time in the Word, don't we? Amen. Amen. We have the assurance from God's Word that Jesus is coming soon. And let me tell you, I've been preaching on, on Wednesday nights, on Sunday nights. I've been on Sunday night, and tonight I'm going to be in Revelation chapter 14, another parenthetical chapter. Then we'll step in next week into chapter 15. And the, the 12, 13, and 14 are instructive or parenthetical. We call them uh, chapters, but they're very powerful, and God's about to pour out his wrath. Let me tell you what, the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. The time of seven years of pure wrath from Almighty God's going to be poured out on this earth. But before that happens, glory to God, we're going to hear a clarion call that comes down from heaven, and Jesus says, come up hither, and in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. I'm telling you, the power of God's word has already revealed. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing left except one thing, the trumpet to sound and Jesus to come, and we are to leave. And the word declares that. We better get ready, amen. You better get in the word. You better start living right, acting right, talking right, and living holy unto the Lord, amen. Praise God. This crazy world in which we're living, we reside Seems like skepticism has become the accepted norm somewhat. It seems like within the media we have more false news than we have true news. And that's why we have a culture of skepticism today. We, we have come to the place where we doubt if anything is trustworthy to believe anymore. You know, we kind of like the guy from Missouri. Show me. Amen. Trust today, honestly, has become a rare commodity. Roughly 40 authors composed the one real trust that we have, but that we ignore. That's God's word. I'm going to tell you something. God's speaking in my heart, and he's telling me, some of you are not in the word. Don't get quiet now. Some of you, you say, well, preach your hand in the word. You, you're not in my home. I'm not, but he is. You're not in the word. You're spending all your time chasing things that have no value. And you are ignoring God. And you're ignoring God's word. And you're ignoring God in prayer. You're ignoring God in the house. You're ignoring God in your living. And you wonder why your life is so messed up. I'm going to tell you, if you will take time to spend time with God, your life can be turned around. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Thank you. I, I challenge you. Start spending time in God's Word. I didn't ask you to read through the whole Bible in one day. I'm telling you, start spending time with God. Start spending time in prayer. You're going to find your life is going to change. You're going to find your ears not going to be tuned to all this chaos and mess and lies of the world. Too many people are wondering and worrying about what's going on in Washington and all these bobbing heads that's telling you everything from both sides, from liberalism to conservatism, everything that's going on. All these, let me just tell you something about all these talk show hosts. They don't work for free. And every one of them, they want you to go out and get this product, get that product, go online and get this, use code, whatever, name, whatever. I'm not going to spend, I'm not gonna spend my waste my time talking about their names. But I'm going to tell you, on both sides of the fence, they're all in it for themselves. I'm not in it for them, and I'm not in it for the world. I'm in it today for him. And I'd much rather hear what God has to say than to hear some bobbing head that doesn't have the facts together. Amen. Listen to what God says. They can't transform your life, but he can. They can't get you out of the mess that you're in, but he can. Amen. 
He can change your life. He can lift you up. He can encourage you. He's that friend. They're not there in the night when you're crying and you're soaking your pillow and problems are overwhelming you and you don't know what to do. Let me tell you what. He is. And his word is in your presence. And if you spend more time, there's healing in this word. Amen. You want to be healed? Hallelujah. Go to Dr. Jesus. Woo! Come on, church. I mean, there's healing in the pages of this book. Take a good old dose of the gospel. Amen. And let that start to work in your life. And you'll be surprised. You'll wake up in the morning feeling great in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Trust has become a rare commodity. We take a book like this, the Word of God, and we place it in our culture, and we find some bold claims. I mean some very bold claims. The Bible speaks boldly now. Amen. Say now. Now. The Bible speaks boldly now, and it also speaks about how. How the Word of God tells us how the world was created in six days. I don't care what some idiot said that today believes in global warming and everything else. And did you hear last week a big chunk of the ice, the North Pole broke off? Well, okay, I think God can handle that. The Bible declares how God, not how you came from some insect or how you washed up on some seashore or some big bang theory or some other ridiculous, unfounded, idiotic mentality thought that has absolutely no substance at all. When God said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. i tell you who I believe. I believe the author of the book. Amen. Not only that. But also it says that the Bible says the Lord rested on the seventh day. He also said how that God judged the earth with a flood in the days of Noah. He also said how a broken man, how that man in his broken estate is also fixable. Amen. If you're here and you're lost, you're fixable this morning. And then he can do it with one solution, and that one solution is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He also today tells how that Jesus will return one day, and he will judge the world. And if you don't know Christ, you're going to be a part of the judgment that he's going to be pouring out. Buddy, I don't know about you, but I know where I'm going when he comes. And I know I'm going to be walking on the street of gold and beholding his glory and shouting the victory, amen, to be in his presence. Why do you believe this book? Why do you believe this book is the Word of God? Well, preacher, you know, I just, uh, uh, yeah, we fumble and fool around with our words. Peter was faced with the same question. And folks, look at verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we were made, no when we were made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Of his majesty. So what Peter was saying is Christ was coming back. People were saying, that's a myth. Now you'll see later that Peter comes and the people say, so where's the promise of his coming? Just because he said he was coming, it doesn't mean he was coming tomorrow. Or the next split second. The fact of the matter is he is coming. And there are two facts that Peter's revealing here. The Word of God is one that can be trusted. You can trust the Word of God. What God says he will do, God will do. And today you've got to believe what he says. Now you can ignore it, you can push it aside, but I'm going to tell you one day you're going to wake up and you're going to see all hell break through on this earth. And I'm glad I'll be in the presence of a holy and righteous God when that happens. The next thing, not only do you need to believe the word of God is to be trusted, you also need to believe today in this fact that the hope of glory is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Now I know I have been preaching on Wednesday nights and we have really gone through some real heavy duty in-depth stuff, and we are again this week. And how long are you going to be on that? I don't know. When Jesus says stop. And on, Wednesday night, on Sunday nights, we've been on the book of Revelation. He said, well, I've missed chapters 1 through 13. It's no problem. Come on tonight. I can bring you up to speed just like that. Folks, listen, we need to be in the Word of God. We need to be in the house of God. I, I want to focus on the fact today that Scripture is our only trustworthy hope that we've got and that we need to cleave to. Let me show you a couple points here quick, quickly. Scripture is our trustworthy hope because it is confirmed by solid testimony. 
People were questioning the validity of God's word and surmised that it was a myth. I'm going to tell you right now, God's word is not a myth, and if you believe it, you're not mistaken. Amen. Peter said, we were eyewitnesses. Listen to what he said. He said, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to verse 17 and 18. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent uh, from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. He said, I was there. I saw it. I heard it. I experienced it. Oh, I'm going to tell you, when you've given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you knelt before an old-fashioned altar, when you cried out to a righteous God before his majesty, and you said, God, forgive me of my sin, come into my heart and my life, you became a, a, a witness of his majesty. Amen. I was there when he saved me. And I know what he's done in my life. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, there's no myth about this. It's miraculous what God will do in your life when you receive him into your heart and into your life and into your soul. Oh, what a difference he makes. Peter says he claimed to see it. He claimed, Peter claimed to hear it. And Peter saw the transfiguration of Jesus when he showed his majesty of who he really should be. Peter wants you to see the results that have happened. There's no myth in God's word, only truth. We listen to too much of what everybody else is telling us instead of what God is declaring to us. Amen. When the Bible says God created the heaven and the earth in six days, it was a real six days, and it's true. Amen. When the Bible says God made man in his image, gave him the breath of life, and God gave Adam then his wife Eve and took it from his rib, and they became, you know, real people. And they also ate from a real tree. And they really fell and failed in real sin. And because of them, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible declares a real Noah. Now, the skeptics came out here some years ago and said, well, uh, you know, it, it's just impossible. Well, let me tell you what. If God said he could swallow a man, a whale, he did. Amen. Folks, who are we to, do, to dispute God's word? A real Noah, a real boat, and real rain fell. Now, if you know anything about the Bible, you go back to the book of Genesis. The earth was watered from a mist that came up from the earth. You can read it on your own time. That day, God opened the firmament, and it rained. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights, and everything on earth was covered. Let me tell you. After that, there was a real tower of Babel, man trying to build his way to God. When God is, he's provided only one way to himself, and that's through his son. There was a real red sea that parted. Amen. There, there, was a, there were real lions in the lion's den. There was real fire in the heated furnace, seven times hotter than it had ever been heated before. There was a real fish that swallowed Jonah, as I said. There was a real cross. There was a real Christ. And the real Christ died on a real death on the real cross and provided for us real salvation that's only found in a real God that loves you today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. All of these things really happened. You say, but they're kind of hard to believe. Let me tell you what. If you believe on God, you'll find with God all things are possible. Amen. Hey, Lord God, there's nothing too hard for thee. Jeremiah declared in Jeremiah 32, 17. So the Bible is not myth. Brother, it's, it, it's not stories. It's not fables today. What Peter said, I saw it. I heard it. I was there. And brother, it's real. Amen. You need this real God in your life. You need this real book in your life. You need the power of Jesus in your life. And when you give your heart and your life, and let me tell you what, it's just, it's more to it. Well, I'm saved. Well, that's fantastic. But have you surrendered all? Have you gotten sanctified? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? I mean, have you really come to God and say, Whoo, God, fill me up with you. Oh, Lord, mightily use me. 
See, folks, we're just backing up. Well, I'm saved. Let me tell you what. If God saved you, it's more than just, I am saved. Man, I am gloriously, wondrously saved by the power of Almighty God. And God is my deliverer. God is my supplier. God is my helper. God is my hope. God is my everything. And when you anchor your soul on the haven of rest and you put your life in God's hand and you take this book and start using it in your life, you're going to find out the power of this book will bring the power of God into your living every day. Your mind won't be on the world. Your mind will be on him. Amen. Praise God. Mm. The question arises, did Jesus really arise from the dead? Acts 1, 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus showed many infallible proofs. You know what that says? It says it's real. Amen. It's real. He really did arise victorious over death, hell, the grave. Thank God. Amen. Easter's just not once a year. Easter's every breath that you breathe. Amen. Jesus didn't die. Let me tell you, he didn't die for a lie. And I'm not trying to be poetic. But he didn't die for a lie. He died because he's the truth. Amen. And the truth is what transforms you today. Jesus just didn't die for something made up. His birth was real. His life was real. His death was real. His resurrection was real. His ascension was real. His occupying the throne is real. I know because I talked to him this morning, amen. His coming again, it's going to be real, amen. Because the sky will split. Christ will come, and in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, thank God. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. Second point. Scripture is that trustworthy hope because it is, it is inspired by God. Verse 20 and 21, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. See here, you, you got to be careful here. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It's not a reader's, it's, are you hearing me say amen? amen. It's not a reader's interpretation. Amen. This defines scripture by the author. God is the author. Yeah, but preacher it says, you know, Paul wrote about, uh, you know, 16 or whatever epistles in, in the, and, and, and you got Isaiah and you, you got Jeremiah and you got Nehemiah and you got Peter and you got Mark and you got Matthew. Why did they get it? Holy men of old inspired by the Holy Ghost wrote down the inspiration of God's word and has given it to us today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving me something in a lost, messed up, confused world that today is in darkness. Thank God with this book I can step into the light. I know where I'm going. I know who's on my side, and I know who's with me. I know who's for me. I know where I'm going, and I know I'm going to arrive alive, safe and sound, because God's Word has said it. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's not the reader's interpretation. You don't interpret the Bible on your own choosing. Amen. Read it. He'll give you understanding. I've heard people say, well, I can't, I, I can't, man, I just, that book of Revelation, I wish I ain't even put it in there. I'm glad he did. That's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And man, I can read that just right. I, I, I read a book and understand. I can read, I can read all 66 books of this and understand it. And you know what? I don't understand. God will give me understanding so I can understand it. So what does he want you to do? I tell you, there's been scriptures I've had to read. There's been scriptures I have to read over again. There's scriptures I have to read over and over and over and over and over and over again. But then God says, there's the message. Yes, study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. See, you can't understand it. Here's several things for you. You can't understand it if you don't know the author. You can't understand it if you're not in it. You can't understand it if you're not applying it. 
Amen. you got to first know the author in free pardon of sin, of salvation. You've got to get in the Word so the Word can get in you, get in your mind, get in your mouth, get in your heart. You'll walk different. You'll talk different. You'll act different. You'll start sort of looking like the world has baptized you with persimmons. Bless God, you'll all of a sudden have a smile on your face. Amen. Amen. I've never eaten a persimmon. I don't even know what it tastes like. But I've heard that saying, so I just used it, all right? Amen. Kind of like eating sour grapes. Amen. I mean, Lord, have mercy. God, God gave you the ability for your, the size of your mouth to go up instead of down. Come on now. Come on. You got Jesus in there? Come on. He's in there doing a job on you. It's Jesus on the inside. Working in you, working on you, transforming you, changing you, making you what he wants you to be, amen. And you know what he sees you as? I'm just trying to get through life, Pastor. That's not how he sees you. I'm just trying to hang on for dear life. That's not how he sees you. He sees you as a child of God. And the revelator said, you are a king and a prince. You're not a pauper anymore. You're a child of the living God. Start living like what God said you are. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let me wrap up. The problem today, we are living in a day where we're interpreting the Bible on our own choosing, and that's the problem in churches today. Picking and choosing what you want to believe. Sorry, you take it all or you don't take none of it. Let me tell you, we, we today do not determine the meaning of what God does because he's the author, and he's already determined what he's doing and who he is. What the Bible means to you is not always what the Bible means. God has a message in there for you. you. You can rely on the author, our God, because let me tell you something. God knows what's best. And we may go through struggles, and we may say, I don't know how many times I could be a millionaire with, if I enumerated uh, how many times people have asked me, Pastor, why? Why? Why does God? Why did God? Why is God? Because God knows best. And sometimes God has to put you down so you'll look up. Sometimes God's got to bring you through to increase your faith. You just can't sail through life in life in the norm today. Sometimes you've got to go through the rough places, the hard places, the dirty places, the dark places where God can speak to your heart and bring you out of those places that you are refined by the power of God and more usable for his kingdom. Amen. Praise God. It's not for us to say why. It's for us to say praise God. He'll make a way where there is no way. Amen. Man, good stuff. What we believe about the inspiration of Scripture is what we call the verbal plenary inspiration. Verbal, every single word is God's word. Even what it says on the cover. Not Thomas Nelson, but Holy Bible. Amen. Plenary, the word of God Meaning this, it's full, it's complete. It's all God's word. All God's word. All of it. Every bit of it. God didn't say, I'm taking it back to heaven. Sorry, you can't have none. God said, you can have it all. Get at the table and eat. Get away from the table of the world. Get on the real stuff. Get on something that will really transform your life. Get in the power of this book of what God has said. This book, the Bible today, would work in your life, a complete work, if you'll just get in the Word and let the Word transform you today. It gives you a complete Savior. That's what the Word does. It gives you a complete hope. That's what the Word does. It gives you a complete peace because that's what the Word does. It gives you a complete supply for that's what the Word does. It gives you a... It gives you a complete joy, for that's what the Word does. It gives you a complete victory, for that's what the Word does. It gives you a complete healing, for that's what the Word does. Thank God. With His stripes, you're healed. Amen. Praise God. What you have to do is reach out and receive it today. Got one more point. This is quick. So scripture is trustworthy. It's a trustworthy hope because it promises Christ's majestic return. Jesus must come back. Three points. 
he must come back and take his church with him. Secondly, he must come back to judge the world. Scripture says that. Thirdly, he must come back to rule the world. We can always live in joy. Hey, listen to me, church. Oh, those of you who are living down under, let me tell you, God wants to bring you up over. Amen. 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 He, he wants you to live in joy and hope in this present day. Why? Because we know Jesus is coming back. I'm not chained to this world. Hallelujah. I'm not chained to nothing. Who the girls used to say, I don't want to get adjusted to this world, Lord, to this world. I'll tell you, I don't have no adjustment here. When I got far more to go to heaven for than I have to stay on this earth for. Why do I want to stay here when it's nothing but trouble and trial and darkness and pain and difficulty when I got a better day and a brighter day coming? Amen. Thank the Lord. We know Jesus is coming back. A majestic moment is coming for the king is coming. A majestic moment because he is majestic. He is majesty. He is everything. And one day that majestic God, Jesus Christ, is going to step out on a cloud and we're going to be changed into his glory. Amen. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Ready for salvation, ready for service, ready to face him, ready one day that you're going to have to stand before him in judgment, amen. We need to focus on this majestic Christ that is in the word of almighty God. David said the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, amen. Pay attention to the word of God because it's a lamp shining in a dark place today. And it's our hope for what is to come. I tell you, knowing what I know, if I was lost, I'd be scared to death. I would literally be scared to death. I couldn't sleep at night. I cut a cord of wood every night. That's my wife. <laughs> Sawing logs, baby. We need that lamp, <laughs> the word of God. But one day, as the scripture says, what Peter says the dawn will rise. I left home early this morning. The sun was coming up. Beautiful sunrise. He says, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in dark place until the day dawn and the day star arises in your heart. Jesus is coming. What does he want you to be? Spiritually minded. He wants you to live a holy life. He wants you to live with hope today. Amen. And one day, what is a lamp in a dark place? When the dawn will rise, Christ will rise, and we will see him. And you know what? We'll be just like him. What a glorious thought. Pay attention to the lamp, friend. The word of God is the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. It points us today to hope, to hope that one day he will come. And soon. Do you have that hope today? Do you have Jesus Christ in your heart and your life? Do you have struggles that, hey, are you, have you got struggles that's keeping you from hope today? The Savior's here right now. He's real. He's in this room. And whatever sins, struggles, situations that you're facing, you know what? You can give them all to him. And he'll take them. And he gives you hope. In place of it. Do you have that hope? Are you anchored on that hope? Are you living in that hope today? Bad heads for a moment, please. Quick question for you. This is very simple to answer. You don't have to think about it because you already know the answer. Are you saved? Preacher, I'm not. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to stay lost. I need Christ in my heart and my life. Pray for me. I ask you to do one thing. Slip your hand up right now. Pray for me. I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. Thank you. Anyone else? I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm so glad he died for all of us. I'm so glad he paid the debt in full. And he says, if you'll come to him, he will forgive you, redeem you, save you, and make you his child. I invite you. I'm going to stand right down here at the front of this altar. If you're lost, whether you raise your hand or not, if you're lost, do something today for yourself. Come and let me pray with you.
that you can leave here with the full assurance that Christ has saved you. So you leave here with hope today. Then how about some of you? You're not in the Word like you ought to be, should be, could be. You're not living for Jesus like you ought to be. You're not sold out to Him the way that you should. You've given everything else in the world all your attention instead of God. Why don't you come today and get it right? Some of you today got struggles you're going through. Some of you got heartaches. You got your shoulders are laden down. You're, you're carrying a lot of pain and difficulty in your life. And Jesus is saying, come on. I can take care of everything that's in your life. But you've got to be willing to come and you've got to be willing to release it. And he's telling you today to come. He'll touch you. He'll touch you right now. Fathers, we stand to our feet. I just pray. Lord, any lost folk will come and receive Jesus. That's a big step. But I pray they'll come. Any burdened heart, any need, any struggle, any today need of getting back to the place of God. And then, Father, if there are folks who would like to make this their church home, they can come. Whatever your desire is, whatever your will is, I pray right now it will be done. We claim the power of our God. You're ready to touch somebody and bless them today. Help us to step out and come to the altars of God and call upon the righteous God that you are and believe and we shall receive. Will you come right now? Come on. Will you come right now? Come on. He's knocking on your heart's door and saying, come on.